Hello again and welcome back. This is David from Carhonan.ca. This is a little video about how I built my Pangu i3 3D printer from rp3d.com. In this video, we're going to build the frame and some of the z-axis. Now keep in mind I didn't have any instructions when I built this, so things might be a little out of order, but you'll get the idea. I highly recommend organizing all of the nuts and bolts into a tray like this. The most common bolt you'll be using is the 3 quarter inch. First place the lock washer on, then a regular washer to keep it flat. This laser cut wood is so precise, the nuts can be pressed into the key to make sure they hold. As I said earlier in the unboxing video, the company provided all of the tools necessary to assemble this kit, including the Allen keys, but I like to use my own. It's a 7 64ths. Because it's pretty straightforward, I'm not going to go into too much detail about how to put the frame together. I have two tips though. Don't tighten the nuts too much. You can pull them through the wood. One thing I didn't do was put the wires through the hole in the frame instead of out the front like this. It was no big deal, but I had to go turn them around when I was finished. These spiral couplers take the stress out of the torque from the stepper motor to the thread screw. The hole on one end is smaller than the hole in the other. Put the thread screw in the small end. In order to line up the coupler as close to center as possible, I put a line on the thread screw. That way, when I put it back together, I can be assured that the gap is precisely in the middle and both threads are making great contact. These thread screws are 11 and a half inches long and they are the two smallest ones that come with the kit. The smooth guiding rods for the z-axis are 12 and a half inches long. These 3D printed parts were pretty clean but still needed a little bit of milling. I used a 7 32nd drill to make the hole for the thread rod to fit through. The nut slides into its little pocket and stays stationary. When the thread rod turns this is what makes the z-axis move up and down. Carefully slide the guide rods into the linear bearings that are pressed into the 3D part. They might be a little stiff at first, but they seem to work themselves in with time. At this point you can attach the fan to the extruder. It's already wired in and just needs a couple of bolts to hold it together. Okay, this part of the video is a little bit different than the other parts. This is because I think there's a better procedure for doing this than the way I did it. The glide rods are very stiff mounting into the 3D parts, and they should be. I clamped the part in a vise and used a hammer to tap in the guide rods. Now, it worked well on the motor mount end, as I was only tapping on the guide rods, not the plastic. That side went all right, and I installed the heat extruder. I started to rush, and I began to tap on the plastic. The part slipped in the vise, and I broke a piece off. Because this is an all ages video, I'm really happy that you can't hear the comments I made when I broke it. A closer inspection showed the damage wasn't really that bad. All I had to do to fix it was dress up like a smurf and use some mentally unstable glue. Hindsight is 2020, and I think the better way of doing this would be really limiting the use of the hammer and pressing the parts into position. The glide rods were 15 and 3 quarter inches long. After they were pressed into the motor mount end and the whole assembly was together, they stuck out from the other side about an inch and a quarter. You can see here I got smart and used a block of wood to make fine adjustments on the final assembly. The extruder should move relatively smoothly from one side to the other. I found the more I worked it, the easier it was. 
The last part of this video is showing you how to put on the end caps to hold down the glide rods. Since these don't have a key to hold in the nut, you can use the supplied needle nose pliers to get a grip on things. Well that's it for part 2. Make sure you come back for part 3. That's where I'll tackle the Y and Z axis as well as the belting. Just hit subscribe so you won't miss it. See you real soon!